Um, thanks for joining in to our fourth webinar, I think, in this series. I'm Stuart Waters. With me is John Dengate. We're from, we're from Twyford's, um, based in the Illawarra, New South Wales. We have people on this, on this webinar from um, Tasmania, Queensland, even Canada, I think. We certainly had a registration from, from Canada, a repeat registration. So if you're on, thanks. Um, this is a half hour session. And it's another in our series where we are talking about collaboration. And lately we've been talking about collaboration in, in the context of silos, those dreaded things that we all recognize internal to organizations or cross organizational silos. Um, and our work in, is all focused on collaboration. That's what we do. We are, that's where we claim to specialize and our consulting and uh, work is in that area. So, we recognize that silos are a common thing for people. Uh, we've been talking about that in a few webinars. And just today, we want to focus specifically on that contractual environment where it might be client service deliverer, funder service deliverer, um, you know, designer deliverer of policy. There's a whole range. And, and I know we've got quite a range of people on this, on this webinar and you'll all have your own contextual, um, contractual contexts. Um, all right, so people still coming in, that's great, welcome. Um, so, silos. Um, what we've been learning lately, a lot of our work's been in this um, uh, contractual context lately, and I just came across in preparing for this um, webinar, this report by Price Waterhouse Cooper, um, and they're finding that one of the biggest issues in the contractual context is this misalignment in their language between the different parties, in this case, project owners and other participants. And I guess that reflects what certainly what I've been hearing, um, different drivers, we're bringing different things to this project, this situation, this setting, and it's really, seems to be really hard for people to um, move past that that difference and just the other day i heard a client say this is it's more like more like a tug of war it's more like competition and in fact you know this doesn't feel like collaboration it's just not feeling like collaboration and that was in the context of a new very flash um, collaborative um, contract so um, building government client uh, constructor and they have this very nice um, collaborative contact uh, contract which is supposed to drive mutual um, delivery and yet the clear sense is this doesn't feel much like collaboration and I think that's what we've been seeing uh, and what we'd like to talk about is how to move past that what to do in that situation because it's it's common and what we're seeing um, in that context is people focusing on the content, of course, you know, that's the project content. In, in this case, it's constructing in the water space. Um, we are really good at the content. And when we get in the room together, that's where we are. It's about problems. It's about solving problems. It's about delivering, meeting milestones. It's, it's all about the content. Um, uh, and sort of at the higher level, what that tells me is, although the contract is about collaboration, mutual gain, mutual pain, sharing, partnership, alliancing, the, the mindsets and the behaviors aren't changing to meet that. It's really hard to drive a collaboration if our, our behaviors and our relationships and our mindsets haven't changed to match the intent of the contract. And I think that's the core of what's going on here. We're still stuck in content. Um, and what we end up doing in that situation, you know, there's there's tension, there's lack of alignment. And, you know, we recognize that problem. What we try and do in that setting is we try and do the only thing we know, business as usual, but we just try and do it better, whatever better looks like. Um, more meetings, you know, better agendas, um, tighter project management, whatever we think it better might look like in that context where, uh, that's all we've got because we haven't really got that other toolkit. We're not quite sure what different would look like. And that's really what I want to talk about today is, is this um, 
question, what does, what does different look like? Let's go back one there. So from that is what we're seeing emerging is these three principles. And this is the, the core content for the talk today. In order to do this well, uh, it seems that we need to understand how collaboration is different. We've entered a collaborative contact, we've entered a partnership, an alliance, um, and yet we're not quite sure what's different about that. You know, there's black and white stuff. We have to have these partnership meetings, we have to do this and that, but fundamentally, what is different in a collaborative relationship? And if we're not clear on that, how can we do different? So we end up stuck in BAU, uh, which which doesn't really fulfill the intent. And I think, Stuart, uh, what we're seeing in that, uh, while there's rigor on the content, there's lots of focus and rigor and discipline around the content and lots of discipline around the contract management, what it's saying, we see little or no rigor around the collaborative process. So there doesn't seem so, that, while there's rigor in some areas, not in others. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And if we think of those three as the legs of the stool, getting this project delivered through good process, good content knowledge, and we're all experts, um, and good working together. It's that working together one, which I think is letting us down. And, and that's that's been our learning. So understanding what collaboration is, what does that leg look like? And if, if we have to walk that collaborative path, how do we have to act? This is the second one. What's different about the way we work? um in in that collaborative space surely there's something different otherwise it's just you know business as usual thirdly and most importantly uh, um it's all about what's up here how are we thinking and if we're thinking business as usual if we're thinking contract management if we're thinking control then it's really hard to collaborate so these three things, we have to know what different looks like. We have to act differently so that we can do that uh, differently. And we have to think differently so that we can act differently. So what I'd like to do in the next few minutes is just step through those three in, you know, what does that mean? Uh, just letting more people in. And um, then we'll take some questions at the end and we'll have you out of here by the half hour. So, First one, pathway. And this is our pathway. Some of you will have seen this before. So this is Twyford. This is what we have been using and thinking about living and breathing and, uh, and supporting clients into for quite some time now. But it's not to say it needs to be your pathway.
having their meetings because I sit there and I, I watch and participate and advise. Um, and you know, the state government is is really their their problem, if I was to put it like that, is how do we protect the taxpayer? How do we how do we maintain our reputation as a good client? And how do we protect our minister and our government? That's our problem. We need to protect reputations and taxpayers. The joint venture, private companies, you know, high technical skill, their problem is we've got to make some money out of this um, because this is this is a problem. Uh, so how do we deliver this um, financially? So that when they get in the room together, you can see they are solving different problems. Um, that's quite a challenge for them. And they're not really consciously aware of that, or if they, they are, it doesn't emerge. So all their solutioneering really becomes negotiation. I want more of this, uh, we want less of that. And it's, it's sort of negotiation around their positions. Uh, when, uh, what I'm trying to help them to do is step back into the collaborative path, which is to say, do we know what our mutual dilemma is, folks? And in that case, you know, that really they share each other's problems. If you think big picture, how do we deliver an excellent project uh, so that it's, you know, that delivers value for the taxpayer in a way that allows our, our delivery partners to earn a crust and, and how do we be a good client for them? So they each share really the problem, which is how do we do this well together? But without the pathway, they, they, they don't have that conversation often enough. They forget it and they get it up into that, as John said, that solutioneering place and it causes the tension. And, and I think if, if the question is what's different about collaboration, we've found that those first, the thinking early on about are we fair dinkum about what we're doing? Do we actually know together what we're doing? Have we listened? And are we actually um, committed together on the process that we're doing to find the answers becomes a really important part of actually doing it differently. And you can easily look and say, yeah, 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 we know all that stuff, but there's something about that commitment piece, the, the getting clarity together on what you're doing, uh, ensuring that we understand together how we're going about this, that makes a difference to how you then find solutions and deliver actions. And uh, while it's subtle, um, we found that it's pretty important and it actually provides a little more rigor, as we're saying, to how we go about collaborating rather than just jumping in together and solving problems, which is often seen as, yes, that's how we need to work. Mm -hmm. So it's subtle, but in our experience, fairly important that it just um, provides some new insight and a different way of taking the process forward. So a little bit of discipline into how we are doing in working together rather than just finding solutions, which is what we're very good at and we love doing. Mm, that's right. Um, all right, so moving on to that second piece, skills. What are the skills? If we're going to walk that collaborative path, what are the skills? Well, you know, as, as you would all appreciate, there's a whole range of them. And what I see, you know, working closely with people who are exactly in this space, excellent project managers, excellent technical knowledge, but this skill set around how do we work together on tough stuff, it's, it's not there as strongly. Uh, and yet there's a whole raft of skills and capabilities and tools that are going to help them do this. You know, we've, we've developed a bunch of, their, of our own and there's a whole bunch out there. So for example, using drawing on that previous example about the mutual dilemma, it's one thing to say, yes, we need to understand our dilemma together, co-define in our language, um, but how do we actually do that? And it doesn't mean just another discussion. You know, it doesn't mean just another meeting in the room with another agenda item. It's just, it's not that simple. Uh, there's a particular suite of tools and skills to do that. For example, we've got one which, which we're calling hold positions aside because if you're the government and your position is we're here to protect the taxpayer, give out no money. If you're the private sector and your position is we really need um, you know, to get as much out of this conversation as we can. Those are two really strongly held positions. And if we're stuck in those positions, again, it's a negotiation and I have seen the pain um, of 
of that when those two sides are really just butting heads. And yet this is a collaborative contract. They're supposed to be collaborating. And yet what they're really doing is butting heads and that drives more, more of that poor dynamic. So how, what's gonna allow them to move past that? They don't really have the capability. So some simple tools about, if I had something that allowed me to acknowledge my position publicly, um, we are here to protect the taxpayer, but, but to let go of that, at least for the next 10 minutes or the next half an hour, just to put that aside um, and be curious about your position. You know, that's a different way of, of being in that space together. And that's a collaborative um, approach. So a simple tool to help them do that. It's, it's um, straightforward and basic. It doesn't have to be this tool. It, the point is we need different skills and different ways of working in order to collaborate. We can't just enter into a, con a contract which has collaboration on it and expect ourselves or each other to do different. There's a different way to work and it's probably something we haven't learned in our careers. And, and, and the missing skills tend to be relational, so they're not necessarily our technical skills. They're ones about that are to do with uh, listening, empathy, um, elements of actually uh, being able to put yourself in the um, other person's shoes, being able to understand where they're coming from so that we can actually find solutions together. So again, they're subtle, but they're different to the skills that we've learned over the years and practice regularly. And we tend to get driven back to what we're um, used to. So uh, it's actually being able to um, experiment a little with some different um, tools. And because they are different and new, they feel a little uncomfortable. So it can be a bit challenging to actually uh, learn new stuff. So it's giving yourself the space, I think, to recognize, I don't necessarily have the skill set, so I've got to be open to the things that I might need that can help me in this different space of collaborating. Mm. And as I said to my clients last week, on exactly that note, they, they can actually support each other, recognize when each side is trying to do something different and support each other into that space. You know, even if their, their positions are different, it's, I, I recognize that you are um, trying to do something different here. And yes, let's, you know, let's go with that. I acknowledge that and support that. So that's the skill set. The third thing, um, the most important thing, the piece that makes everything possible and is also the biggest barrier is the mindset. How do I need to think to make this collaboration work? And that is something that we tend not to think about. Um, in fact, I don't think I've ever, ever had a client talk about that uh, without us raising this question. How are you thinking? Are you thinking like a collaborator or are you thinking like a project manager? And, and, and it's quite, uh, you know, it's sort of like invisible, which is Stuart saying. Good example for me the other day, I was talking to a client and uh, um, the person wanted to actually work with a bunch of elected officials. And so um, they said to the chair of this group, oh, look, would I be able to come and, and sit in on the session to help you with your processes, with your collaborative processes? Interesting, the comment that the chair made was, um, oh, but you might know more, get to know more than the CEO. This was a sort of elected official only meeting. It was interesting to sort of reveal the mindset of this knowing mindset that I've got to know. And if you actually uh, are trapped in a I've got to know mindset, uh, the, the question is, what's the implication of actually trying to work better together? Because if you need to know and you're not willing to not know, does that really let you listen and, and uh, share information appropriately? So it was quite revealing about that element of mindset. And I don't think the chair would have even realized it's invisible and they don't think about how they're thinking. But without a shift there, there's a risk in that case that people will just hold on to information and not share it because, well, I can't let that person know more than I know. So what's the risk? Well, I might lose a bit of power and control, whatever it is. So those type of dynamics are uh, quite powerful uh, and hard to explore, but, but absolutely crucial if you actually want to change the way you work and uh, change the way you do things. Mm. Mm, that's right. And in fact, I think that would be fundamentally my um, closing remark. So we'll, we'll get to that. But what I think you've just talked about, John, is, is how, do I, how do I be a collaborator 
instead of the boss in that case? Or how do I be a collaborator instead of the manager of this project? How do I be a collaborator first and the technical expert second? Doesn't mean I have to give up my technical expertise or my role as the CEO or, or the project manager. Yeah. yeah. How do I how do I do this as a collaborator? And that's a question that clients don't ask uh, without a whole lot of prompting. And that's the change in mindset that's required if we want our partnerships, our alliances, our contracts to work as, as ideally they do. We've entered into these things for a reason. And, and this is the important piece. That means I have to shift my thinking and how we as an organisation are thinking about them sharing control it's with, not to. That's a simple line that we, we use often. Are you doing this with or are you doing it to? And, and I think the other thing about um, <coughs> sharing control in this area is reflection, taking time out to actually deliberately have a look at how you're thinking. It's not often that you'll stop and, for instance, ask the group, okay, what was actually going on in the meeting, but what also was were you thinking but not saying? And it's quite revealing but quite hard because it challenges some of the mindsets we hold. Oh, I couldn't share that info. Mm -hmm. So you actually need processes like reflection, taking time out, building it into your agenda even, to actually uh, work on the mindset. This doesn't come naturally. It doesn't come automatically. You're stuck with BOU if you don't take a conscious and active effort to do something about the mindset if you want to shift to a collaborative mindset. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Saw a good example of that last week, again, in the meeting, in the moment, with, with these contract partners talking about dollars, a painful conversation, and, and the, the, the project manager, the lead deliverer, said to the government client, I, I feel like the dog that's being kicked, you know, you've got the big stick, I feel like you're kicking the dog when we try to do the right thing. And that's the moment when both sides have to stop and think about how they are thinking um, and what are the implications of that? And so that's exactly what we did. What does that mean? How does it feel? Um, and if we're in that headspace, how can we possibly be collaborating? So what are we going to do about it? Um, all right. So we're nearly done. And I just have some, some time for questions. Oops. Let's go back one. So key thing from here, understand your pathway and why and how it's different. What is different about collaboration? It's not just another contract with a few additional clauses in it. If we've got collaboration in our contract, that means something fundamentally different. So agreeing that being clear is important. And because it's fundamentally different, that's going to require us to have a new tool, a toolbox. And so what is the collaboration toolbox and how would I know and how do I learn to use those tools which look a little different? They're often, as John said, relational, about people, about listening, about communication. Um, and finally, to make all of that work, I need that regular thinking about my thinking and our collective thinking. So those would be, you know, they don't make this stuff go away. They don't make any of the tensions or the drivers disappear but they, to me, are key aspects of making a collaborative contract work. So I'm just going to open that up for any, any questions. Don't forget to unmute yourself. We've got about 25 people on, so I think that's manageable. I'm interested, if there's anything you'd like to know about that? And while you're thinking, John, I wonder if you've got anything to add, add to that at all? Uh, just write, uh, you might write your question in the chat too. That's another way to... Yeah, sure. Uh, no, look, I think uh, I think the key, it's, we did say it's a bit like a stool, so you need balance, you actually need uh, to have some thinking about what's different about collaboration, also skill set, but also mindset. So we see that you actually need to work in all three areas, but we do know that one of the hardest areas is the mindset, because it's invisible, hard to, um, hard to see. Um, and um, paying some attention there. And it, it takes a bit of, sometimes you've got to get some help from people around you. It's hard to actually see yourself um, what's going on. Hmm. So interested in anyone's thoughts, questions, comments, any observations about that? Um, when have you seen this done well? Uh, have you got a collaborative pathway or any questions about what that takes to make it work? 
kind of a match to your experience. Thanks, John Stewart. Um, my name's Aidan and I work for a company called Checkup. We coordinate and contract a large number of um, health service providers across Queensland. Um, it's been really good to hear you talk about, um, I really like the point about collaborator first and contract manager second. I guess it's really easy for us to get caught up into the process um, as opposed to actually trying to work collaboratively and sit down, understand the problem together and come up with solutions. One of the challenges I guess we face is that because we have such a large volume of contracts that we have to manage, we've created a number of economies of scale like systems processes which are standardised. And with those standardised processes, I guess it kind of reduces the amount of flexibility that may be available um, in collaborating or perhaps conceding some things in order to um, uh, overcome some of the barriers that our um, contracted providers might be facing. So I guess, do you have any thoughts or suggestions around um, like how do you strike that balance between maintaining um, like those efficiencies and standard processes, but also being able to be flexible and adaptable um, to you know unique situations that each of those contracts might require. So I've got a comment, but John, anything on your mind? No, you go and then I'll. Hmm. I, so that that is part of the inevitable dilemma of collaboration. How do we collaborate when we haven't got time or resources to collaborate? That's an, an eternal question. Um, and it's just so one thing is just to keep putting that on the table with your collaborators. And at least so we acknowledge the intent uh, and we acknowledge the dilemma of collaboration in these constrained situations. Uh, you know, it doesn't make that problem go away, but it's part of it. I think the other thing that the powerful thing to do in that space is focus on how you are thinking. So how you are thinking about what you, you are doing, this has been my learning over many years, is much more powerful than the process you are applying. You can, you can have all the time and space in the world and be you know, on paper collaborative, but if in your heart of hearts, um, you're not really thinking and acting like a collaborator, it, it doesn't fly. And the reverse also is true. You can send really strong collaborative signals because you're putting stuff on the table, you're inviting people in, even if you've got virtually no room to move because of time resources, you can be signaling the collaborative intent and that goes a really long way. Um, but it, it's a practice that's required. How do I think like a collaborator, even when the space to move is really small? I think uh, also you can have a look at where the risks are. I mean, it, it, when you, uh, you don't have to do it collaborate if you like at the same level, the same extent for every circumstance. So I think it's also just being aware, looking at where the, the greatest risk is and perhaps putting the effort into there. Uh, one of the things we're talking about the next webinar is when not to collaborate is using a little framework that you might find useful, which is, helps answer that question of where do I put my effort in? Because sometimes nowadays it's like, oh, we've got to collaborate with everybody on everything and do it to the full extent. And I think, no, 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 no. Let's just get real here. Let's actually do it where it's necessary, useful. Let's do it authentically where it matters. And as Stuart said, let's apply the thinking where we can, even where there isn't much space. So yeah, I think you, you can have some choices and some ways of actually helping uh, answer that question. Good question, thanks. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Others? I'm sure there are other questions out there or observations or your own experience. Hi guys, my, my name is Nick Todorowski. I work for one of the PHNs uh, based out in New South Wales, calling from Wiradjuri country here in Orange. Um, one of the, the things I would love to know is we work quite closely with a number of Aboriginal stakeholders across our community and ultimately we, we work differently with our Aboriginal stakeholders and would love to know, you know, if you've had experience in, in working with Aboriginal partners and if so, do you collaborate differently? Are there other elements that you put into the process in terms of your collaborative processes? Mm. Um, again, John, um, jump in if you 
if if you've got something i think that the, the truth from my perspective is i have limited experience in that space um i think in order to step into it i would hold really firmly the principles about uh, and i'm sure you do this really well Mick. you i'm not telling you anything you don't know um it's it's listening it's co fingerprints on everything your fingerprints um, how do you, how do you want to get your fingerprints on this? What's important to you in this? You know that that would be the in, the intent if I was in that space. And as I say, I, I suspect you're right across that. John, have you got anything? Yeah, well, just some experience I had some years ago with um, a group, Indigenous group out near Orange or Dubbo, and uh, as I think um, Auntie Alice said at the session, she said, you know, John this was different and why was it different it's just because you let us tell our stories i mean it wasn't rocket science for me i mean at the time just a colleague and i went and we just listened and they said it's the first time any from governments listened you know let us tell our stories mm -hmm. so i don't think it's difficult to um uh it works well in the environment where people see you're authentic and respectful uh and i think that's just the the framework around the mindset of that one about with not to that we need to listen before we do anything uh, unfortunately seems to be <laughs> not often done mm. Mm. sounds great thank you anyone else Right. Um, so I guess uh, I'm happy to stay online here and keep answering questions. We're probably close to that half hour in any case. So um, that's fine. I just want to let you know that this is the work we do. We help people with these three things. Pathway, what is it? Collaboration. Um, uh, what are the systems, processes, tools and skills? And that reflection piece, coaching and advice. Um, so we do a lot of that. So, you know, if you're interested, give us a call anytime. Happy to talk, happy to share some of our experience and, and to learn with and from you. And just an just advert for the next webinar, um, just reminded as I gave that answer. Um, the question we, I, I probably get most from uh, clients is, John, can, have you got something, a tool that helps me decide when and whether to collaborate? And so what we're going to talk a little about is how do you actually, uh, and we've got a bit of a tool um, that we'll be talking through about uh, how you can actually give yourself um, some clues in that space and particularly not collaborating on everything, but being, I think what we've found, it actually frees up a lot of clients going, ah, oh, you mean, wow, that's good. I can just do what I need to do when I need to. I don't need to always collaborate on everything. So you might find that useful. So that's our March webinar. Very good. So um, thanks to all of you for getting online, but stay online. Um, we'll be here and happy to happy to chat if you'd, if you'd like to. Um, otherwise, go forth and collaborate. What more is there to say? Thanks for tuning in and hope to see you next time. Yep, thank you. Thanks, John. Thank you, guys. Thank you.